Today, we're taking a deep dive into the Sunset Harbor DLC for Cities Skylines. This is the last DLC that we'll be taking a look at in the town of Plainville because the only other one we have to talk about is Snowfall. And although we can explore some of the things that that DLC has to offer in a regular city, we really need to load up uh, one of the snow maps in order to experience it. So we'll be doing that this weekend. But again, today is all about Sunset Harbor, the last official DLC we'll look at for Plainville. What does Sunset Harbor give us? Sunset Harbor really is almost a mass transit 2.0. There's a lot of options for transport hubs specifically, and we'll definitely break all of those down. Uh, but I want to get into a few other things first that we'll uh, briefly touch on. Um, and that is, where can we do this? We don't, we don't really have a good spot, um, is the fishing industry. How much of this lake do we own? Enough. Okay, that'll work. Um, and can we piggyback it off this road? This would be awesome. Maybe we'll have to do some uh, some landscaping here to make this work. Now, if we pop over to the Industries tab, there's a new industry area. We don't have to paint an area for it, though, like we do with the others. So it's kind of weird how this nests in the Industries tool, even though it's kind of its own thing. So uh, when we're first starting out, we have a basic fishing harbor. Sends out low capacity boats that can catch all types of fish with a moderate rate. Fish farms can be used to grow and gather high yields of fish. Farm has a growing cycle and when complete, sends it off to the fish market or fish factory. Uh, again, buildings that we can drop in here. Now, as we upgrade our fishing, you can see we have anchovy fishing harbor, salmon fishing harbor, shellfish, and tuna. So we have four different types of fish. If we select a specific type of building, the boats that leave from there are more efficient at catching that type of fish. Now, where are they going to catch those fish? Well, if we look at our info views, uh, there's a couple things we can look for. Uh, two things factor into what type of fish occur where. Uh, the speed of the water and the depth of the water. So you can see where things are uh, pretty shallow and still. That's where the anchovies are going to be. Deeper and still is going to be the shellfish. And then if we come over here, you can see where the water's moving a little faster, but still shallow is going to be salmon. And then deep and fast, or at least deep and moving, is going to be uh, the tuna. So depending on what type of boats you run where will determine what type of fish you might pull, uh, pull back. So uh, let's do this. Let's drop in a basic fishing harbor. Can we get it that close? So we need to connect this road. So let's let's bring this down here just a little bit so that it's kind of parallel with the uh, the existing road network that's there. Uh, this is very similar to ferries. We need to create these roadways. Uh, let's pause it um, and we'll freeform it. And where we send them is the type of fish they're going to pick up. So if I do something like this, where this just comes out here and loops back around will create a fishing route that in this case is only going to pick up shellfish because it's the only type of fish that's available uh, within that route. Now, if we wanted later on, we could do other routes that kind of piggyback off of those so that we could run them through uh, salmon and tuna waters. You could also, another thing you can do is break out the landscaping tool. And if you create, let's take a look at this. It would be awesome if they did the terrain height in here a little bit more obvious. Um, we could create some slopes and force the water to move in, in different areas. So you can use the landscaping tool to change what type of a uh, uh, of fish you might be more proficient at picking up. So once you've got a fishing harbor dropped in, I wonder if we should be concerned about that fire uh, helicopter. Let's not worry about that for a moment. Once you've got the fishing uh, dropped in and got some basic routes created, they'll start to collect fish and make the waterways feel a little bit more alive. In our case, though, for Plainville, this is really off to the side of the map. So uh, I'll be getting rid of this. Um, you know, maybe it's something that we add in another town, but I don't think Plainville needs fishing. I think in the right map, though, it can really, again, make the waterways feel more alive. Just make the map feel more populated. Once you have that fishing industry in place, drop the fish market into your map if you want to sell goods directly to customers. Put the fish factory in your map if you want to process that into goods to then be sold 
into commercial zones. So if I understand this right, and I think that I do, uh, the customers treat this as a commercial destination. Whereas here, this is going to process the goods and then additionally take an extra step of sending that out to commercial zones. So potentially more traffic there, or at least another hop of the traffic. Something to keep in mind. Now, the next thing that I want to cover today is a new form of mass transit, and it's similar to another one that we haven't talked about yet. Part of the Snowfall DLC is trams. This is trolley buses. Uh, and in both cases, they work very similar. So uh, just like with the buses, we need a depot somewhere. Let's see if we can find a spot for this. <laughs> this is kind of a big one. This one also needs to be hooked up to roads that have trolley bus wires. So. I actually do want to hook it in to this little loop. So that actually works okay. Let's do this. And you'll notice we get that little icon because we're not connected to trolley buses anywhere. We're not, we, we need roads to connect them. So I'm gonna do the upgrade tool and we're gonna upgrade this loop right here. We need them to be able to connect in and turn around on this uh, this segment. And I'm going to have this run all the way down here, all the way down to our uh, roundabout. So we're going to do some trolley bus coverage along this strip. Now, when we get to this roundabout in particular, we're going to switch over to the one ways. And that should hook us all back in. Um, and then we'll do a bus line, a, in this case, a trolley bus line um, that covers this same strip. So uh, let's create our first stop here. We'll do another one down on uh, this side. Why don't we do another one down here at this intersection? One, of course, over by the stadium and park. And then let's do one more right here. Uh, they'll circle around on the roundabout as we make our return. I think we can do kind of similar stops on the other side here. Probably circle around this way. So now that we have our trolley bus depot, our trolley bus roads and line, let's go ahead and hit play and watch the magic happen. Interesting thing about these uh, buses, technically, I, I think in most instances in real life, um, they can detach from these, these rails. Unlike a tram, which we'll see in the snowfall episode next, uh, that's really, you know, tied to the ground because it's running on rails. These can actually disconnect and reconnect on the fly from those uh, wires providing power overhead. We've got some traffic problems so we've got to deal with. Mass transport can help out a bit, can also can create some traffic in spots, but hopefully it's moving people around. But uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, IRL and, and especially in Boston, you'll see these uh, that, that come on and off of lines. So they're, they're partially or hybrid powered. Um, but in this case, 100%, you have to have rails wherever those go. We'll see again here. It'll connect into the roundabout before it zips back around. Now, uh, caveat of this and trams, you can't have those roads intersecting because they need a place to turn around. They need, um, you know, unlike, I guess, metro and train that can just come to a station and then 180 to get back out of there. Uh, these will always need a route to, uh, to turn around. So you'll have to have, uh, you know, little loops at the end of your lines or uh, like we did over here, uh, like we did over here, kind of run it around the block so that it can turn around. But that's the basics of the trolley buses. I, I mean, they're kind of a cool look, but they demand, uh, you know, an extra road type and uh, do come with their own challenges, but they also have kind of an interesting look. Uh, I think overall though, let's, uh, let's look at one thing here. Right, these buses still only cover 30 passengers. So they're no better than buses or biofuel buses and they require extra consideration uh, by modifying your roads. So do they have a cool look? Yes. Do they come with their own complications? Yes. But if you're looking for something a little bit different in your city, the, uh, the trolley buses might just be it. So that's definitely, I think, one of the most distinctive features of Sunset Harbor. Now, the free update that came out with Sunset Harbor also gave us some new mechanics uh, on PC, on console, and uh, part of that was the above-ground metro. 
So this is part of the free update that happened around that time. Uh, we've already added those into the city of Plainville. So now your metro can be below ground, on ground, or above ground. Um, and although that was tied to this specific release, it's not part of the DLC. It's something you can mess around with for free. However, something that does come with this DLC is a ton of different options for transport hubs. So we had a couple small options before. One of the best that we have in the city so far is definitely the monorail metro train hub, which can be really useful. Of course, we could run uh, bus coverage out to the, the street in front also. Uh, and we've even done the, the park life trick here where we're charging people money just to walk up to the station by forcing them um, off of the road because of highway and onto this sidewalk where we can charge them. But that's what we had for uh, for kind of moving people around across multiple hubs. Our best hub option for moving traffic came from the Industries DLC, and that's the Cargo Hub Airport, which combines train, uh, truck traffic on the roads, obviously, and airplanes. Now, I threw a big, long road off here on the edge of the map because I want to actually drop these buildings in uh, and show you what some of the new hubs look like for Sunset Harbor. Up first is the Bus Inner City Bus Hub. This will allow bus routes from inside your city to make stops at the pads you see in front of the building. But in addition to that, it will also accept buses from off map, that is from other cities. So it's a way to get tourists into your city. I guess people also occasionally leave, but it's a way to get traffic in and out of your city in addition to things like the airport. There's also the Bus Hub Metro Hub. This combines a bunch of pads for the buses to stop at and also two metro stations in a 90 degree configuration. So um, you have the two uh, entrances on top. The two stations are different heights, so you shouldn't be running into any problems there at the station. But that's a great option for combining uh, some traffic. Of course, if you do something like this and combine two different buildings, your metro and bus completely separate, you can also uh, do a little park path and make some money for all the people traveling back and forth between the two. So if you want to keep things a little more condensed, the hubs are good for that. If you want to make a little bit more money and you have park life, separating out your buildings can make an interesting impact on your budget. This is one of my favorites. This is the Metro Inner City Bus Terminal. So get people into the city on bus and then get them moving around on Metro. This one, however, only has one station underneath. So, uh, so keep that in mind. This one's a train and metro hub, and it actually has a little footbridge to carry people across the road. It's got a really nice look. Again, if you do this manually, though, you could do your own footpath carrying people across and charge money with Park Life DLC. But this is a really cool way to tie together metro, rail, and obviously traffic uh, moving around on the roads, whether it is cars or pedestrians, giving them a nice hub area. Now, for this next one, I had to clear out a very large piece of land uh, and more specifically flatten it. Uh, then I tried to, to slope off the sides here. This one is the Metropolitan Airport. It is much larger than the standard airport, which has one runway and, uh, and road access. The uh, International Airport is reasonably large and it has uh, two runways. This uh, looks more like a regional airport, um, you know, potentially a you know, a single set of gates, uh, a single terminal maybe from a larger international airport. But uh, this definitely has more of the feel, um, I think, than either of the built-in uh, objects. Or I shouldn't say built-in. Uh, one of them is base game. The other one is After Dark or Mass Trans... Uh, I'm going to double check that now. After Dark, okay. So most people should have the international airport in their game. Uh, this one's, a, a, I think, a really nice looking addition. Uh, on top of the uh, the road access that it has, it also has uh, two metro tunnels linking underneath. Whereas the International Airport, which you see this is the object I've got selected here, has uh, one uh, metro connection uh, underneath. So pretty cool building, I think. Uh, you know, it's got the right scale. It's got a massive parking lot. Well, at least in terms of cities, it has a massive parking lot. Uh, it also has helicopter pads which uh, can be very useful, and we'll find out more about that in a minute. But uh, this object, I think, is is pretty cool, and I think this one's actually going to stay in the city. So let's hook this in real quick. We're going to have to do a little bit of surgery here. Let's uh, let's see what we can do. Took the uh, easy way around on uh, some of the modifications here. I tunneled the train underneath our new highway exit, and it's not the most beautiful, but it works. 
Uh, what's most important though, is we've got two lanes, uh, individual lanes coming down to the two lane highway, uh, which this is a two lane road in front of the airport. So it's gonna narrow it down to one lane. They're only gonna use um, that outer lane, but that is okay. They do have parking. And I also hooked in uh, two metros, one tunnels underneath uh, connecting in, I guess I could show you the actual tunnel connecting in to uh, this existing route that I've got here. Uh, this connects our stadium with an express route all the way back to uh, our hub here, the uh, metro and bus hub. The other one, because uh, again, there's two different 90 degree stations here. Be careful when you're hooking those up that you're hooking them up to the right one. Uh, the, uh, the one that uh, connects off this way comes all the way down here and is an express route to our train metro monorail hub. So this really helps uh, move some people around the city. We'll see how much. So I think this is a cool one. We'll have to see uh, how much this actually brings in for uh, traffic into our city. Hopefully uh, not too much in terms of car traffic, although there we go, there's some people coming and going. I think we can check the actual building to see how many people it services. Passengers last week won $8,000 a week upkeep. So. If, uh, if that stays that low, we'll definitely gut it. But that is, I think, definitely the coolest looking of the airports. Definitely feels the most alive uh, and has a couple different ways for you to get people in and out of there in the form of roads, metro, and those helipads that I hinted at earlier. Why don't we talk about that next? Now, up first, I guess we should talk about the helicopter depot. And this, like so many of the other mass transport depots, uh, we need to get those uh, vehicles spawning. Something that occurs to me though that we should do is let's do a little one-way loop right here. Hold on a second. So that uh, cars have a way to circle back into the zone if needed. One of the reasons that might be needed, and we'll add a little extra road over here, uh, is if we have things like fires or police or health problems, I guess we should have um, at a minimum a little uh, police station, a little fire station right here protecting the airport. But the other thing that we can drop on this road is that helicopter depot. Now let's see here. We'll put it right. Let's put it over here so that we've got a little bit of room to play with. Because you'll notice that little bump out the, uh, the back of the road. Well, we need helicopter pathways. We actually need to define roads where the helicopters um, are going to fly. So uh, let's do this. Let's drop in at least one or two other helicopter stops around our city just to get people moving around. Let's drop it in here for the heck of it. So the, the building itself isn't that big, but the, the pathways connecting to it um, are unfortunately. We'll freeform to get out of here. And these are air pathways, so these don't really matter as much if they're overlapping with stuff. But I think it would be kind of cool to have these sweep out over the river and sort of follow the river to uh, to come back up. And why don't we have this one loop all the way around the airport, create some, uh, <laughs> some nightmares for some poor traffic controller. Um, we can hook this one up to here. This is the depot that's hooking in. This isn't a stop, right? This is just to feed vehicles into the line. We have two stops that are possible here. Uh, and then they'll circle back around to get to the outside of the city. We should be able to also, if we're careful with our angles. Why would I not be able to cross there? That's weird. Um, so let's start a second road, a second road, a second pathway roads where we're going. We don't need roads. Um, we need helicopter paths. So do we get one down here? Let's get helicopter service into the uh, the baseball games. And then how do we connect this one in? So let's come out this way. And bring it into this side before we take the traffic back out over, maybe over this way a bit before linking it back up. Now you don't necessarily have to cut into the depot like that, but I think it will work. So let's see what we can do here. We can create a new line that goes from the airport to well, I guess this side of the airport should come over here. 
carry some people over to that side of the city. And then... No, and then back over here. So we'll complete that line. From this side, we'll carry people over to the stadium. And then bring them back. So we'll see what these look like. Uh, when they're all taking off at first, there can be quite uh, quite a buzz as they all kind of stack up. The other thing is you gotta be careful how incentivized people are to use certain routes. And if this is the easiest route, they'll line up here. Um, I had my town of Swampscott, if you wanna do a... Yeah, see this happens. <laughs> they just stack up on top of one another and wait for the one in the station in front of them. These, these will definitely despawn. Um, it's a little funny like that. They seem quirky. And if there's too many people piled up at a stop, uh, it, it can get absolutely outrageous. So make sure you have other options. It's very cool, I think, for making the city feel alive. Same thing with the fishing boats. Uh, but ultimately, they can the, the helicopters especially can just be a backlog of traffic. So uh, give it time to settle down. Maybe put less uh, vehicles on a line. So if we look at transport routes and we come over to air, we can see that we have uh, the helicopter lines and you can modify the uh, the vehicle count. So we don't have too many people lining up for that one just yet. We'll see um, how busy that gets. But my, my Swamp Scott uh, Let's Play had an outrageous amount. I think it was over a thousand at one station at one point. So yeah, they're kind of cool. Yeah, you see the helicopters buzzing around the city. You know, uh, ignore that traffic in the foreground. We still haven't done any traffic troubleshooting. Um, but, you know, we've got more air traffic. We've got more stuff happening. What is that single black pixel in the sun? Does anybody else see that? Does that come through on the recording? I think it does. I don't know if it'll come through on YouTube. It definitely comes through on the recording. I was worried that was something on my screen or a dead pixel, but it it flows very freely with the uh, with the sun. So maybe there is some sort of celestial object in between us and the sun. Uh, don't try this at home, kids, in real life. Um. <laughs> uh, I was going to make a joke, but those days are done. It's fine. Don't be a person that stares at the sun. I want to finish off the episode talking about waste and water options. In this case, let's start with waste We've got the ultimate recycling center, so we're not even going to touch these options that are part of Sunset Harbor. But as you're upgrading and grinding your way up to the availability of these monuments, and I guess if you don't have green cities, you don't have ultimate recycling center. So uh, something to consider is that Sunset Harbor gives us some new ways to deal with trash and actually has kind of a cool mechanic, um, but you're really committing to polluting a section of your map. So let's take a look at this from the ground up, just to get a quick idea. Uh, get a look at the uh, pollution bubble. Purple is the pollution bubble. So uh, this is the standard dump, and it's got a decent size bubble. Let's kind of try and slot it in the same spot. You can see pollution gets you know down to that four-lane street that covers the front of uh, our industrial area if we slot it in right there. Incinerators don't have the same problem that dumps do and that they don't fill up because they're constantly burning off the garbage. But in order to do that, they're creating a ton of pollution, about the same size bubble. I feel like the pollution is actually more concentrated though and worse. But as far as the game is concerned, both cause 100 pollution. What the incineration plant does in addition is 50 noise pollution. So that has an additional knock-on effect. But that should only be bothering people at home and you shouldn't be putting these close enough where the sound or the smells can bother them. Recycling Center with Green Cities DLC gives us less noise pollution and a lot less pollution pollution. You can see those bubbles are much more concentrated and aren't uh, expanding as far. This one also doesn't fill up and can be moved anytime that you want. So what's new in Sunset Harbor? Well, the waste transfer facility is stage one. This has 10 pollution and 25 noise pollution. So less pollution than a recycling center even, but a little bit more noise pollution in the process. Size-wise, it'll fit into about the same spot, but you can see, again, that bubble of pollution is pretty small. The thing is, this is not the ultimate destination for your city's waste. This is just a transfer facility. It's a, a holding spot. What you have to do after, though, is send it off somewhere, and that is the job of the waste processing complex. And this thing, first of all, is massive. Look at it, you know, next to, <laughs> next to our ultimate recycling center. It's about the same size. 
Um, the pollution is absolutely massive. I cannot stress this enough. 250 pollution. I believe the max pollution bubble on anything else in the game is 100. So this is two and a half times the pollution bubble. If we were to slot this into the same spot, notice that, you know, we're not just touching the street. We're well across the street into the residential area. We would be polluting all that ground. So definitely not something that you want to put anywhere near your city center. You want to have this, you know, off on its own way at the edge of the map um, again if you're using it i think it's a really cool concept it would have been awesome to have something like this in the game to begin with so that you didn't have you know the problem of dealing with dumps and trying to empty them and all the complexities that go with that so is it a cool concept yes would i use it if i had the option for the ultimate recycling center no i would not it creates just this such a big bubble of pollution i kind of want to uh, turn it on in a build just to see it um, but check out my uh, Swamp Scott build for uh, to see that in action. Uh, you know, again, kind of cool. Does it work in your city? Maybe. If you don't have green cities, it's a great way to deal with your garbage in one central building and then have, you know, pickup facilities uh, closer to deal with that um, in your urban settings. But I'll leave it to you whether or not you use that in your city. If you have all the DLC like I do, let me know in the comments down below. Are you using waste transfer facility in the, the complex or is it like why right why bother sunset harbor also gives us a, a few new maps all the dlcs do give us new maps but i think the sunset harbor maps are some of my favorites specifically in terms of the variety that allow you to build in one of them is a very deserty map with very little water so you need to come up with some new ways to manage those things once your water intake for that you could use something like a water tower which does what sixty thousand cubic meters of water per week 240 per week upkeep. This is a 720 per week upkeep, a lot more expensive, but it handles 160,000. So a lot more water from one of these structures, which is only slightly larger in footprint. Maybe not even, maybe, okay, slightly larger footprint, but um, you know, it's, it's a nice look and it gives you the ability to, again, bring water into your map where you might not have uh, an actual river. Now for this next part, I'm going to pop over to the cargo uh, airport hub area thing uh, just so we can grab a piece of road here and talk about a couple bits of water treatment. So if you're dealing with a deserty map, like I mentioned just a moment ago, draining water needs to go someplace, it needs to go into a lake or river or ocean, at least as far as the base game is concerned. There's four different buildings for water treatment and they all work kind of the same. Let's talk about the basics. You have the inland water treatment plant and the advanced inland water treatment plant. The advanced version doing a little bit more noise pollution, but a fifth of the pollution of the standard water treatment plant. You'll have to hook these into your pipes of your city and it will take sewage and drain it into the ground so that you don't have to deal with a flowing river of disgustingness, uh, especially useful again if you don't have access to running uh, water. For a slightly more expensive, but also more environmentally friendly alternative, you have the eco inland water treatment plant and the eco advanced inland water treatment plant. Same thing as before. Uh, these are going to be more expensive in cost initially up front as well as upkeep, but they do less pollution and noise pollution than the non eco counterparts. Um, and this one does next to no pollution. So we're talking seven pollution and 15 noise pollution. The only thing that's better than that is if you have green cities and you have the eco water treatment plant and obviously a place to run that water off that does zero pollution and 15 noise pollution. But whether you go eco or standard, regular or advanced, they all do the exact same thing. They take sewage and they drain it into the ground. How much they cost and how much they pollute is up to you. But that is one of the ways that we can now deal with sewage water. Again, especially important if you don't have uh, any bodies of water uh, to work with to drain off your sewage, especially if you only have a lake. Uh, this can give you great ways to get rid of that, just drain it into the ground, worry about it later with policies um, and things like the uh, the Eden Project to uh, reduce some of that pollution even further. But uh, really cool kind of new mechanics for dealing with wastewater and waste that are part of Sunset Harbor. One other additional building to talk about, and that's a unique building that comes with Sunset Harbor. It's the Aviation Club, and you'll have smaller uh, private planes kind of buzzing around your map. Uh, you know, little stunt flyers. There you go. There's one taking off right now. 
uh, you know, kind of assessing the model there. You, just more air travel and traffic, and there's just more stuff moving around in Sunset Harbor. You know, whether it's the extra planes, the helicopters, the fishing boats, when you combine that with other TLCs and you have, you know, the hot air balloons and all these things buzzing around your map, it does make it feel a lot more alive when we're not just seeing traffic on the ground, but, you know, kind of seeing it um, in the water, on the land, in the sky, really makes things feel, um, again, very, very different and very alive. I like the Sunset Harbor DLC a lot. I like the transport hubs and the massive metropolitan airport. I love the trolley buses. I love that look and feel. Uh, but I think I love the trams more. We'll talk about that in the next episode. So all in all, I do like Sunset Harbor. It is not my favorite DLC, though, by any means. I think it's a very interesting twist and gives us a ton of cool options. And I think if you've got all the other DLC, it's kind of a no-brainer to add this one on top because it, it does do some cool things to your city. You know, things like wastewater make living in a desert map possible. Without those options, you kind of have to create a horrible, horrible lake or river flowing off somewhere. I really like, again, how it makes the map just feel more alive if you put some of these things in place, but it's easy to overdo. You know, the helicopter routes and the fishing routes can get a little crazy, it can get a little backed up. So use it sparingly. You know, hopefully this gave you an idea for some of the things that are possible with Sunset Harbor. We've got one more DLC to deep dive into, and that's gonna be Snowfall. The reason that I saved that one for last is because even though we can get the benefit of a couple of the small features um, uh, of snowfall in a regular city, we really need to load up a snow specific map to do that. And rather than build one from the ground up, uh, I'm gonna make use of my season five let's play called Winterfell, but tune in on Saturday for a look at snowfall, our last DLC. I'll probably circle back after all this with some of the content creator stuff, reinstall my radio stations and all the other DLC that uh, you know isn't a, a full-on expansion, uh, but definitely can still have uh, some cool little things when it comes to uh, the different zoning you can do, with some of those content creator pack options. But we'll check that out in a future episode. Next again is Snowfall. Stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video, likes, comments, shares, they all help the channel a lot and they are all so greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new, hit the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. Links to lots of things in the description down below, but until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.